Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ding! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Do you believe in people... Do you believe that a man living in a mud hut in some dark, far-off corner of the world is still a man for all of that? If you do, this message is for you. It's the story of that man and his neighbors in a primitive village in the Orient, the Middle East, Africa, South America. There are thousands of such villages, all seeking something better than they have had before. Enough food to go around, a clean well, a school for the children. These are the freedom villages of our world today. And they're coming into the 20th century primarily by their own bootstraps. They need just a little help. A contribution in any amount will help swell the fund. And village by village, the free world will be strengthened. Send your contribution today to Freedom Village Care, New York 16, to any local care office. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, Yukon King, were in Dawson to report to the inspector at the end of a patrol. They were walking down the town's main street, and an old friend whom the sergeant hadn't seen for some time came out of the cafe. Jim Harper. Uh -huh. oh. oh, well, as I live and breathe, it's Sergeant Preston. Glad to see you, Sergeant. Glad to see you, Jim. You too, King. How's your daughter, Fanny? She's fine. How long have you been in Dawson? Just got in this morning. You finally give up the search for gold at Bald Rock? No, nope. no, sir. He starting back there this afternoon. Huh? Fanny's been there alone since yesterday. I just came in to transfer a little business with Andy Jenks. He runs the cafe, you know. Yes, I know. I can see him in there examining a heavy gold watch and chain. Oh. Uh, yeah. Is he? By the way, Jim, what time is it? Uh... All right, you guessed it. It's my watch he's got. That watch meant a lot to you, Jim. The last time I saw you, you said you'd starve before you'd part with it. Well, I didn't sell it permanent, Sergeant Preston. And he's just holding it as security for the cash loan. I'll be able to pay him back inside of a few months. Will you get the money to repay him at Baldry? Well, I... Uh... The gold mine up there is played out, isn't it? Well, well, yes, you might say so. I got to get going, Sergeant. Penny's home alone. I promised her I'd start back right away. Just a minute, then. What's going on at Bald Rock? I... You... What do you mean? I've been in Dawson less than an hour, and I've already heard about two men from Bald Rock who came here to raise cash, and you're the third. I've got to get going. Besides, I, I promised I wouldn't say anything. So long, Sergeant Preston. Goodbye, Jim. So long, King. Oh, oh, oh. King, there's something going on at Bald Rock. I wonder if the inspector says anything. Oh, 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 oh. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston was in the office of his superior. When he had finished the report of his recent patrol, he spoke of Jim Harper and the others from Bald Rock who had come to town to raise cash. Have you heard about them, Inspector? Yes, I have, Sergeant. Well, Bald Rock isn't on my patrol, sir. I don't know much about the community. Well, a lot of the people went there when gold was found in the mountains. They staked claims and started work. They soon learned that the ore was of very low grade and practically worthless. Well, that doesn't explain why they're risking their most treasured possessions to raise money. No, it doesn't, Sergeant, and I'm curious. I have a week before I'm supposed to start out on patrol again. That time I could go to Bald Rock and look around, sir. I'd appreciate that, Sergeant. I'll overhaul my gear and start out in the morning, sir. 
Jim Harper left Dawson that evening, and it was the following morning when Sergeant Preston set out on a trail along the rim of Willowark Canyon toward Bald Rock. The Mounties' dogs were big and strong, and paced by the great dog king, they covered ground much faster than Jim Harper's aged team. Late afternoon found Sergeant Preston within sight of Bald Rock when Jim Harper reached his home. Jim took the dogs out of harness and then went inside to greet his 18-year-old daughter. Glad you're back, Pop. You made good time. Well, not bad, considering the age of my dogs. How'd you make out? That's fair, Penny. Fair to Midland. Of course, the dogs aren't used to working much. I don't much. mean the dogs. <laughs> well, I got the cash I wanted. I told you Andy'd let me have it. Oh, well, Andy Jinks is a mighty shrewd man. If he knows a cash investor, Mr. Martin Syndicate, it must be all right. Uh... Yeah, 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 Martin's got a good thing there. I still hope Mr. Martin's on the level. Of course he is. He's a fine man. What's more, he knows gold mining. Had a lot of experience in California. Why, you said yourself you liked the gent. Well, yes, I did. You I... don't sound sure of it. What's wrong with Martin? But it's not Mr. Martin. Pop, it's his partner. Curly Larson? Well, what's wrong with him? I don't know. You said or done anything wrong? Not that I know of. It, it's just his eyes. They're... Well, they're shifting. Well, sakes alive, you can't go on. The door. I'll open it. Oh, well, Mr. Martin. Howdy, Miss Penny. All right, Jim. Come in, Martin. Come on in. Thank you. I just got back from Dawson. Yes, I saw you coming into town. I'm all ready for you, Martin. Got the cash for that stock right here in my pocket. Fine. I'll make out a certificate for you. Here, Martin. Sit right at this table. There's a pen and ink. Thanks. Mr. Martin, are you sure there's gold in the mountain? Sure. <laughs> Why, Miss Penny, everyone knows there's gold there. Yes, but, well, it's never been worthwhile to work this time. Because of shipping costs, my dear, because of shipping costs. You see, it's not worthwhile to ship a ton of ore all the way to the States for the fifty or $75,000 worth of gold it holds. But if that ore is refined right here in Bald Rock, now, that's a different story. If I didn't think it worthwhile, my dear, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Hey, you are, Jim. There's your stock certificate. Yeah, and here's your cash. Well, how soon are you going to begin building the refinery? Very soon, Miss Penny, very soon. We have to buy up a few parcels of land, then we'll be all ready to go. Oh. Who in tarnation is hammering on the door like that? Mr. Martin here? Hey, what's the excitement, Larson? Mr. Martin. What is it, Curly? I've got to see you right away. You better come with me. There's something wrong? I've got to see Martin, that's all. It must be urgent. It is. Will you come with me, Martin? Oh, yes, we're through here. I'll see you later, Jim. Yeah, yeah. I hope nothing's wrong. I'm sure there's nothing serious. <laughs> Larson is an excitable man, you know. I'll see you later. Well, what's the trouble, Larson? Plenty of trouble. Come with me. I'll tell you while we're walking to the caravan car talking. We've got to get out of here as fast as we can. We've got to travel fast and hide our tracks. Why? Sergeant Preston of the Mounties just came into town. Preston? I've heard of him. What's he doing here? This is off his patrol. I don't know why he's here, but that's beside the point. The point is, it won't take him long to learn that we're selling stock on the promise of building a gold refinery. Soon find out that we have no intention of setting up any machinery or giving these people any return on their cash. How can he know our intentions? After all, Listen, Preston... Martin... I had trouble with the law in Whitehorse. What? I'm wanted for a couple of robberies and a shooting. You never told me that. It didn't matter until now. Preston sees me, I'm a gone goose. And if he knows you're working with me, he'll find reason to hold you until he can check up. Then he'll learn that you haven't ordered any machinery. Well, we've collected a tidy bundle of cash. It's pretty near time to leave town anyway. Won't take us long to throw our gear together and get moving? First, we've got to take care of Preston's dog. See? Yeah. I'd never have gotten away from White Horse if King hadn't been wounded. We can track down any man who ever lived. And what do we do? Shoot the man? No, no, no. Gunshot would bring Preston on the run. We'll take King along with us. Then he can't follow our scent. Talk sense, Curly. King's a one-man dog. He'd never go along with us. He's locked in a wooden crate. He won't have much choice. We'll just put the crate on our sled. Very smart, Curly. But how do you get the dog inside a crate? Sergeant Preston wears his official police whistle on a cord around his neck. In an emergency, he uses it to call for help. King knows that whistle. He'll come when he hears it. Yes, but I... Preston doesn't know you, does he? No. Now, then you can get close to him in a crowd. Maybe in the cafe. With a sharp knife, it won't be hard to cut the cord and take the whistle. If Preston goes to the cafe... He'll go there. Because that's the best place to get information. When you get the whistle, don't waste any time. Bring it to me with the cafe. 
Curly's reasoning was logical and accurate. Sergeant Preston had gone to the crowded cafe for information, leaving King to watch the dog team behind the building. When Martin arrived, he saw the sergeant, noticed particularly the cord around his neck, and correctly surmised that it was attached to a whistle in a pocket of Preston's tunic. He waited for over half an hour before he had an opportunity in the jostling crowd to cut the cord and deftly remove the whistle with the skilled touch of a pickpocket. Then he hurried to rejoin Curly in the shack. You ready, Curly? Yes. Yeah. Dixon waiting out back. I just finished the crate. Did you get the whistle? Yes, here. Yeah. Have any trouble? No, but I had to wait for a good chance to steal it. Is the money still in the cafe? He was when I left a minute ago. His dogs are around in the back. Yeah, and open that door and so. Right. Now, push the crate over close. There. That ought to do it. How are you going to get the dog inside? That's easy. You blow the whistle hard and the dog will come on a run. I'll watch him through this crack in the door. When he gets close, I'll get the door shut. <laughs> Lucky it opens out. The swing out wide. The dog will come bounding through the opening and be right inside the crate. Then you drop this gate and we'll have him. He'll raise an awful commotion when he finds he's trapped. Won't matter once we're clear out of town. Now blow the whistle. <laughs> continue our adventure in just a moment. Boy, oh boy, that was a curved pitch that would fool any batter. Hey, kids, wouldn't you like to be in the ballpark and see how a star pitcher makes the ball curve right over home plate? Golly, everything about a major or minor league game is exciting. The crowds, the goodies, get in on that excitement. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you're 12 years or younger and have mom or pop with you or another paying adult. It's as easy to get a free baseball ticket as going to the grocery store. Get it right inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice and Muffet Shredded Week. You get two free tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Golly, why wait? Get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top from the regular package to Baseball Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. <laughs> to continue. King was with the other dogs of the team behind the cafe when he heard the whistle of his master. He couldn't understand it. He thought Sergeant Preston was still inside the cafe, but the whistle sounded from a shack a hundred yards or so away. King had been taught to obey that whistle, and after only a brief hesitation, he bounded through the snow toward the door of Curly's shack. As he came close, the door swung open, and the whistle sounded again inside the building. King saw a crate in the doorway. Instinct warned him of a trap, but it was too late to check his leap. He knew instantly that something was wrong. As he turned in the small space, a board dropped into a slot and blocked his exit. Uh, we got him. All right, now let's get out of here. Uh, that side of the crate. Take it out the back. That door the team is hitched. You have the cash? Yes, yeah, right here. Where do we go? Down. This is the route through the canyon alongside the river. That's the shortest. Soft snow in the canyon. Might get stuck. We leave tracks. We take the longer route. It's safer. Feels like ice won't show tracks of our sled. Now grab that crate. It was not until some time later that Sergeant Preston discovered the loss of his whistle. He mentioned it to the owner of the cafe. What do you suppose happened to it, Sergeant? I can't imagine. I'll investigate the loss of the whistle later. First, I want to talk to those men you told me about, Martin and Curly. I saw Martin here a little while ago, but he left. That was before I knew you were checking up on this proposition. Where does he live? Uh, come with me. I'll show you. All right. Yeah, we'll go out the back door. From there, I can point out the shack where Martin and Curly are living. It's an old place that the prospector built some time ago. Oh, is your dog, Sergeant? Yes, I where they're parking. Hello, boys. Quiet down. Take it easy. King, where are you? I don't see your lead dog. Neither do I. King! King! Quiet, quiet there, boys. That shack right over yonder is where Martin and Curly live. The door is open. Yes. That's curious. I'll go see if they're there. 
During the walk across the hard-packed snow, Sergeant Preston was bothered by the loss of his whistle and the disappearance of King. But it didn't occur to him that the two were connected. He found both the front and back door of the cabin wide open. There was no sign of either Curly or Martin. Behind the shack, no tracks were visible on the icy snow. Meanwhile, Martin and Curly maintained a steady pace through gathering darkness. King had worked ceaselessly on the slats of the crate that imprisoned him. The wood was gouged and splintered from his strong fangs. When the sled reached the rim of a canyon, Curly called a halt. Oh, oh, oh you man. Oh, oh, oh. Why are we stopping? That dog has been working on the crate. Let's see if there's any chance he's getting free. He can take the crate off the sled. Stab for the one side. All right. Uh, Careful you don't get your fingers inside. Uh, just put it down at the edge of the ravine. Uh, right here. Uh, we can leave it here. By the time the dog gets free, we'll be miles away. Can't take chances on that dog getting free. What are you going to do? I'm going to kill the mutt. No, no. I shoved the crate over the edge of the ravine. All rivers down below, fast and deep. That'll take care of King. No, Curly, you can't just kill the dog. I'll handle this. Curly, you, you did it. Sure, I did it. That dog would kill me if he got the chance. Now, while we're here, get rid of Preston's whistle. I don't want anyone to find you carrying a police whistle. Uh, here it is. Toss it into the canyon. Uh, now there's one more thing, Martin. Curly, what's the gun mean? It's about time I carried our money. All right, if you want to. You don't have to pull a gun on me. Toss that money to me. See here, Curly, if this is something... Toss the to... money. There you are. <laughs> That's better... I'm sorry, Martin, but there isn't enough cash for both of us. What are you going to do? Curly! Curly, wait! Don't shoot me! No! Oh. <laughs> yeah, Curly picked up the money pouch, stepped on the runners of his sled, and shouted to the door. <laughs> Curly didn't suspect that King had escaped from his recent prison. The crate, weakened by the powerful fangs of the great dog, had broken on impact with the water. King was free and swimming toward shore when Martin struck the water. King's instincts and training directed that he save human lives wherever possible. He knew that Martin's weak struggles were futile. Knew that the nearly unconscious man was drowned. The dog swam to Martin. His strong teeth found a grip on Martin's pocket. Then he set out for the ice busted shore. Martin clung desperately to a slender thread of consciousness. With the aid of King pulling on the shoulder of his parka, he was able to crawl to the narrow strip of shore between the river's edge and the face of the sheer cliff. In the cliff, he saw a shallow cave that offered some protection and shelter. King left Martin and started upstream on the narrow beach at top speed. Sergeant Preston has spent hours questioning the various people of Bald Rock without finding any trace of Martin or Curly or his great dog, King. He was with Jim Harper and his daughter. They could tell him nothing about King, but they went into great detail about the plans of Martin. And here's the stock certificate, Sergeant Preston. Doesn't the idea sound like a good one? Yeah. Yes, it does. There is gold in the mountain. It's there. Only trouble is, it's low grade ore. If the ore could be refined here, those mines could operate as a profit. I think it's a. Oh, I hear a dog. It's King. King! King, old boy. Where in the world have you been, fella? You're all wet. What happened to you? What a beautiful dog. Oh, yeah, boy. Steady now. What's the trouble? He's tugging at your leg. Want me to go somewhere, eh? Right? That's what he wants. <laughs> Go ahead, King. I'm following. King led the way to the rest of the dog team sleeping in the snow behind the cafe. Without awaiting orders, he roused the team and put them in line. Sergeant Preston asked no questions. He strapped on the harness and hitched the tow line to his sled, knowing he could travel faster on the runners than he could by following King on foot. All right, King. On King! On your husky! <laughs> We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. It's a home run! Hooray for our team! Golly, kids, baseball games are a lot of fun, aren't they? He smashed that ball right out of the ballpark. And that puts our team ahead. Gee, I wouldn't miss seeing this game for anything. 
Say, are you fellas and girls getting in on the fun? Well, come on. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Get your free baseball tickets right inside packages of Quaker Puff wheat, Quaker Puff rice, or Muffet shredded wheat. And two free tickets are inside Quaker Pack of Ten. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. If you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see major or minor league baseball games free. So rush to the grocery store. Get free baseball ticket packages of Quaker Puff wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Pack of Ten. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, send a box top in the regular package to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Go to the ball game free. See home run hitters in person. Now to continue. King followed his own back trail into the ravine and along the riverbank instead of taking the course followed by Curry's sled, which had led to the rim of the canyon. Suddenly, Sergeant Preston saw a gleam of yellow flames and a moment later realized that it was a campfire burning in a shallow cave in the side of the canyon. Preston leaped from the runners and hurried to the side of Martin, who lay close to the fire. Wounded, eh? Yes. Yes, Sergeant Preston. Yes, I'd like to know who you are, but don't talk too much if it hurts. Uh, I'm Martin. Huh? Who shot you? Curly. That dirty double-crossing crook. I'll have to cut away your clothes. Look at that wound. Uh, How did you find me? My dog brought me here. (laughs) Doggy. Saved my life. Pulled me out of the river in spite of what I did. What did you do? Curly and I, we knew you'd learn about our swindle. We figured we'd better get away while we had the chance. While Sergeant Preston dressed the wound, which was not serious, Martin told about the theft, the Mounties' whistle, and the capture of King, and the attempted murder. I don't deserve to live after what I did. I've heard about you, Martin. You are supposed to be a top-notch engineer. Oh, I used to be good. I know my business, but I got off on the wrong foot. Yeah, your wound's dressed. Thanks. I'm going to build up the fire and leave you here with some food while I try to overtake Curly. He's heading for Connors Creek. If you go straight on through the canyon, you'll save a lot of time. I hope you get that crook. I'll try. Go on, King. Oh, oh. Line him up, boy. Line the tail. Oh, 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 oh. Curly had stayed on the canyon's rim where the trails were hard packed and would show no tracks. But Sergeant Preston, by going through the canyon, cut miles from the roof. He didn't realize how close he was to Curly until King suddenly barked. Oh, oh, oh. Then the Mountie saw a vague shape in the darkness ahead. Get him, King! King was off like an arrow from a bow, streaking ahead of the team. Curly heard his snarls and turned. He saw the furry shape charging with leaps and bounds. No, no, it can't be. He hesitated, unable to believe that King was still alive. He went for his gun, but he'd waited too long. King was in the air in a final mighty leap. He struck the would-be killer in the chest and sent him sprawling. All right, Curly, it's the end of your trail. I'll take over, King. Get the dog off. Get him off. He's a ghost. He's no ghost, Curly, but that's not your fault. You tried hard enough to kill him. Now get to your feet. I'll pick up Martin and go back to Baldrock. Martin? Yes, he's alive, and he'll be a witness for the crown against you. It was the following morning when Sergeant Preston brought his prisoners into Baldrock. Word of the swindle quickly spread throughout the community. Also the word that Sergeant Preston wanted everyone who had bought stock to assemble in the cafe. Jim Harper and his daughter and many others were there with their stock certificates. Disappointment was stamped on their faces. When Sergeant Preston arrived, he was accompanied by Martin. A hush swept the assembly. All of you people were defrauded. You know that by this time. I have your money here intact. I can redeem all the stock certificates. First, I want to tell you one thing. Martin had a plan, and it's a good one. He intended to swindle you, and so did Curly. However, Martin has the know-how and there's cash enough to do exactly as he promised. Folks, folks, I want a chance to redeem myself. I want to build a refinery and go ahead, just as we planned. If you people can see your way clear to give me another chance... What about Curly? Curly's in jail and he'll stay there. He's wanted for a number of crimes in addition to the attempted murder of Martin. Martin, however, has made just one mistake and he regrets it. Do you think we should give him another chance? Yes, I do. Just to safeguard your interests, Jim, you handle the money. I'd rather have it that way. One of you men handle the money. Just let me work. Yeah, that sounds fair enough. What do you say, boys? Then that's settled. We'll build a refinery. 
It was some time after the affair in Bald Rock when Sergeant Preston reported to the inspector after a regular patrol. There was a curious expression on the inspector's face. <laughs> you lost your official whistle in Bald Rock. Yes, sir. Try this one. What? Well, this looks like gold. It is, Sergeant. All but the cord. That's made of silk. That's my name engraved on it. That's right. It's made of the first gold to be refined in Bald Rock. It's a duplicate of our official whistle, except that it's made of gold. It's a gift to you from the people of Bald Rock. You were a little premature when you said that the Bald Rock situation had been concluded when you put Curly into jail. Yes, sir. I seem to have been premature. I didn't suspect anything like this when the Bald Rock case was closed. <laughs> return in just a moment for the word about our next exciting adventure. There's Roaring Adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild, and civilized ways are gone in an ever-present lust for gold. Now let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers, and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The west, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. The masked gunman strikes without warning, and no one knows his identity. Unless Sergeant Preston can capture him before the gold shipment is sent out, the sergeant is almost certain to be heading into a deadly ambush. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. The delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. <laughs> This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.